if a customer wants a pickle, you give them a pickle, right? Kelvin <laughs> <laughs> Cocoa Pop. If a customer wants a pickle, you give him a pickle, right? If you want a pickle, you gotta give him a pickle, right? <laughs> you guys still there? Baloney Nation. Jim <laughs> we're back. The big guy. What's going on? Well, you know, it's a little hot today. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's what? Like 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees, folks, here in upstate New York. And it's the 4th of July. Independence Day. Yeah. And <laughs> how are we celebrating our independence? Well, we are doing the podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're talking baloney. We're talking baloney because that's what you guys want. <laughs> to today, I know we always say we have like special things, but today we actually have the birth of our merch. The birth of the nation and the birth of... Actually, the birth of the baloney nation swag. That's right. The merchandise. Look at all the choices. Folks, we paid some people some serious money. Signed this contract. Look at this. We got mugs. We got more mugs. Well, let's see what the, what's the big silver thing there. Is that, is that stainless all, steel? Stainless steel thermal. Talking uh, baloney. Keep your hot goods hot. And your cold goods cold. <laughs> and how can someone get one of those? You just got to go to our uh, our page and you can order it. <laughs> and we'll ship it to you. That simple. While well, we're getting the page set up, folks. Yeah, we, we don't have the page yet. But if you it's go coming. to uh, TalkingBaloney.com yep. or you reach out to us at Baloney Talking on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Or if you call us, 585-484-1770. Correct. You can get your hands... And a mug. <laughs> a mug, folks. Stainless steel. Stainless steel. Thomas, or. Oh, oh brand snap. Brand new. Brand new to the nation. Talking baloney t shirts. At baloney talking. And if you want, we'll even put your name on the back of it. That's right. Heck yeah. <laughs> or we have the classic that you're modeling right oh, now. Oh, the classic black with the white lettering. Or if you want the gray, or if you want a yellow shirt, you want a white shirt, you doesn't matter. We don't care. We'll get you whatever. Power saving is always our, <laughs> yeah. that's our mission. Save an energy, save the planet. We're going to pass those savings on to you <laughs> when you pick out some of the merch. Look at that uh, gold and black mug. Folks. That right there is look at that. mint. Look at that. Uh-huh. Genuine ceramic. Hold on. Uh, yep. Genuine ceramic. Made right here in China, folks. Right here in China. Only the best. Only the best. We that's all we provide for our show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and did I mention? Hey, I no. believe we talked about these last week. We do want to thank Jimbo Joe's Coffee for sponsoring the show. We do have a line of mugs available as well. Look at that, <sighs> folks. Look at that. Bam. That's awesome. I'm telling you. But listen, we introduced it last week on the show. If you call the Baloney Nation hotline. What? Oh, yeah. There it is. There it is. Your coupon. Oh. And what's that redeemable for? Good for one cup of coffee. Absolutely no retail value whatsoever on this. Um, that's a legal disclaimer. We have to say it. We have to say it, folks. Cause you but can... let's face it. If, if you... If you can turn around and sell it to someone else, and you make go some right money, ahead. Hey, if you can get Starbucks to take it, just don't mention the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, folks, this expires. We got two expiration dates on this: twenty twenty seven and twenty twenty nine. Because we're not really sure when the company's going to open. So, <laughs> it, it's a range somewhere yeah. within there. It may might expire. Ooh, embossed too. Ooh, we spared no expense with this one, folks. If you don't want to use it, you just you don't deserve a good cup of coffee. And again, you can get a coupon yep. by texting or leaving a voicemail. Texting or leaving a voicemail. At 585-484-1770. That's right. And we're going to answer some more questions. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We're going to respond to another voicemail. Oh, boy. And we're going to do that later in the show. Oh, excellent, excellent. But today is 4th of July. It is 4th of July, folks. 
Independence Day. And we thought, we like to talk about movies. Yeah. We're, we're not like serious movie critics. But no. You know, we like to talk baloney about movies. We do have history with movies. We do like to review things. Go back to the 80s and 90s sometimes, or early 2000s when movies were real and they meant something. Yeah. <laughs> and they weren't all politics. Because oh, we don't talk politics. We don't talk politics and religion on this no. show. Why would you? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk movies that have to do with the 4th of July. Ooh. First time. one that comes to mind is an obvious one. Independence Day. Independence Day. Will Smith. It was kind of uh, Will Smith's uh, big coming out party as yep. a movie star. Yeah, and the guy from The Fly. Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. Bill Paxton. No. Bill Pullman. Bill Pullman, that's right. He was from Hornell. Is he? I think he's from Hornell, New York. Wow. Well, I can tell you this. He went to Hornell Senior High School. That's where he graduated. So, See, folks? I may not always have the correct information, but I'm pretty dang close. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, folks, his speech on top of the airplane, one of the best ever given. That is a uh, magic movie moment, yeah. I would call it. I would. That I was a, it was a pretty good movie, but that like speech really like tied it all together. and We were facing our demise. Kind of the same as today right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that movie was uh, directed by Roland Emmerich. He's okay. kind of the king of the uh, disaster movies. <laughs> After uh, that, he did a bunch more blowing up the earth kind of oh, movies. He also did uh, Stargate prior to that. Oh, well, that explains a lot. Yeah. Um, now, they, they did a sequel to Independence Day a couple yes. of years ago. Yep. Did you see that one? I did. And I'm going to tell you right now, without Will Smith, it's trash. <laughs> Listen, I don't understand why people keep making all these sequels to these movies. I don't get it. Like, yeah. you hit the nail on the head with Independence Day 1. Clearly, we already know what happened. So now we have another another alien attack with a Independence Day 2? Come on. <laughs> well, the, they waited so long. Yeah. Now it was Too like long. A, a good thing and a bad thing. Because mm -hmm. I think... There's a certain amount of time you wait, and people, nostalgia, they want to go back and relive Independence Day. Right. Or and they've you, died, and they, yeah. they're no longer with us. <laughs> or then you've waited 25 years, and you don't have Will Smith, and it's like, what was the point? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say anything Will Smith is in his gold. Yeah. Sorry, folks. It's the truth. And so, obviously, that movie was also released right around July 4th. Mm -hmm. And that started the string of Will Smith being Mr. July 4th. Correct. After that, he did Men in Black, mm. did Wild Wild West. Again, Men in Black was only good with Will Smith and the <laughs> yeah. and the guy from The Fugitive. <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't see the latest one with uh, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. So I started watching that 10 started. minutes ten minutes into it, I turned it off. The dumbest, stupidest piece of crap movie I've ever seen. Wow. It ranks right up there with Look Who's Talking 9 and 10, or whatever the <laughs> hell that was. <laughs> so there's one other big 4th of July movie that comes right to the top of your head. <laughs> no? Nope. Born on the 4th oh, of July. Oh, yeah, Born on the 4th of July. We just talked about this backstage, folks. Born on the 4th of July with Tom Cruise. That's right. Directed by Oliver Stone. Oliver Stone. Good movie. Man, does he get crapped on in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's a... Deep, deep yeah. movie. <laughs> it's a dramatic movie. Kind yeah. of, uh, I don't know if sensitive people would, uh, would be able to watch it. Nah, it'd be a little too much for some people. Yeah. You got to be able to look past all the... The different boundaries and got them open open mind watching this movie because it's going to tell you both sides both sides of the coin it's based on a true story yep this is a real person injured in vietnam yep. in a wheelchair becomes uh kind of an anti-war protester yeah and whether he's in a chair or not he gets the crap kicked out of him <laughs> repeatedly <laughs> it's uh it's kind of funny that uh tom cruise wasn't like the go-to guy at that point for drama. He was, you mm -hmm. know, Mr. Uh, Top Gun. So that was like a big step for what him. What year did that come out? That is a great question. Was that pre-Rain Man or was that after Rain Man? 
<laughs> so born on the 4th of July was 1989. Okay. I'm going to guess Rain Man was probably early 90s. 88. What? Yeah. How the heck? Well, I guess I was wrong, folks. Thanks, Aunt Paula, for texting that in. <laughs> Tell me I was wrong again. <laughs> so... I mean, obviously, Rain Man won a lot of critical acclaim. I don't think people thought Tom Cruise. No. He wasn't like the dramatic center of it. It was Dustin Hoffman. It was Dustin Hoffman. So I think it was still a big leap for him to be like the star of Born on the Fourth of July. Yeah. I mean, both serious movies, but man, Born on the Fourth of July was a whole other character for him. Oh, yeah. I mean, he had to be in that character, and he was in that character in that movie. I think every Tom Cruise movie prior to that, he basically played... The yeah. same guy. Yeah. He was the same guy in Top Gun as he was when he was a bartender. And oh, the- Cocktail? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> Top Gun. See, Maverick was the bartender in Cocktail. He was also Dustin Hoffman's brother in Rain Man. <laughs> and he was uh, in The Color of Money. He yeah. Was the, uh, the pool hustler with Paul Newman. Was- Younger version in Risky Business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> same character. It's Tom Cruise being Tom Cruise. Yeah. So this was a big departure, and yep. it worked. Golden yeah. Globe. Uh doesn't win too many awards for his acting. No. So. <laughs> Guy does all of his stunts, though. Yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty damn crazy. <laughs> if you've seen uh, the Mission Impossible movies lately, <laughs> uh, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. He's doing some pretty far out there stuff that would probably... I know I'd break a hip trying to do some of that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> he's, uh, he's getting up there in age, mm-hmm. and yet every other movie has gone to like CG effects. Yeah. But he's actually out there hanging off the side of an airplane. <laughs> Folks, I mean, that's dedication right there to your craft. Because <laughs> you ain't going to see me hanging off no building trying to get the scoop of the story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Tom Cruise is 58 now. Whew. Folks, 58. Yeah. It's technically the new 38. Well, he, does, he doesn't look 58. No, no. He, I mean, he looked a little 58 with dementia when he was jumping on Oprah's couch. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't talk politics or religion. Yeah. Otherwise, we would mention Scientology right now. But we don't do it. We don't touch it, we folks. Just, we, we don't, don't. Do it. Why would you want to? <laughs> All right. We're going to take a quick break. <laughs> Commercial, folks. we got to pay the bills. All these back, wonderful sponsors. <laughs> we got a lot more. Oh, yeah. So much stuff. Oh, yeah. It's coming, folks. Be ready. If a customer wants a pickle. Welcome back to Talking Baloney. Live, me and the big guy. Hey, yo. Hey, Rawr. in the studio on this balmy 90 degree day. <laughs> yeah, and it's hot in the studio without the uh, air conditioning. Freaking AC hot. <laughs> <laughs> wow, is it hot. So we're, we're talking 4th of July. Yes, we it's are. It's the 4th of July. Yep. Fireworks, folks. Yeah. Be safe with the fireworks. Don't hold them in your hand. <laughs> are, are you getting, uh, down in your neck of the woods, a lot of uh, people doing fireworks every night? Thankfully, where I live in the boonies, it's uh, not a lot of people okay. in our area. So, But you go down to my parents' place down in Elmi- Elmira, New York, yeah. and it's like Baghdad. <laughs> it's yeah. insane. That's how it is in uh, Rochester. It's a uh, it's been a nightly fireworks show. For, oh, it's crazy for weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I literally stopped just to say hi, and we dropped off a, a Father's Day gift to my dad, and it was legit. Like, okay, were those fireworks or those gunshots? Were those fireworks or those gunshots? And it was non-stop from the second we pulled up till the second we left. <laughs> Like Baghdad. Like Baghdad, folks. Afghanistan. <laughs> you name it. Russia. <laughs> Whatever you want it to be. So we're talking uh, Independence Day movies. Correct. We talked Independence Day. Independence Day, of course. Born on the 4th of July. Yep. Uh, before we get to the next uh, big movie, I do have a uh, trivia question for you. Oh, this I like trivia. A, uh, a new feature su- suggested by one of our uh, viewers on the See, folks, Nation. we listen. We do listen. I, I had to write this one down. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So what famous TV show had their series finale take place on July 4th? 
That doesn't mean it aired on July 4th, but this story took place on July 4th. <sighs> I've got four options for it. Okay, go ahead. A, Bob Newhart Show. Mm. B, Happy Days. C, Wonder Years. D, Good Times. C, Wonder Years. Ding, 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 ding. Woo-hoo, folks. The you Wonder can't... Years wrapped up their show on, uh, with a special July 4th episode. I'm telling you, folks, you can't get trivia by this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mean you can, but <laughs> I'm good at multiple choice answers. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have a clue until the, the multiple choice? As soon as you said uh, multiple years? choice answers, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the little... Uh, TV trick behind that is the TV season runs September to May. Mm-hmm. So you always see TV shows do Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, all those kind of episodes. Mm-hmm. They never do July 4th episodes because they don't air in the summer. Right. Um, so it was kind of unique that the Wonder Years. It's a good show, too. That. Yeah. Pepper. It was a big ending, too. Pepper. Wasn't that her name in that show? Pepper. <laughs> Winnie? Winnie, yeah. <laughs> Winnie Pepper. <laughs> Winnie Cooper? Winnie, uh, that's what I'm saying, Cooper. <laughs> Winnie Pepper, folks. That's her name. Was that one of your cats growing up? Pepper. 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 Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. That's why it's on my brain. <laughs> ah, Pepper. Pip squeak. <laughs> the so, Pepper. There's one other really big movie for the 4th of July that we have to talk about. And that's oh, yeah. Jaws. Oh, Jaws, folks. The shark that makes you not want to go in the water. <laughs> the shark with a vengeance. <laughs> People legitimately were, were scared. Were afraid to go to the beach <laughs> yeah. for years. And you should be. Heck, I just saw a video the other day of a bird carrying a shark around. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck's up with that? Now you got to worry about birds. <laughs> you got sharks at the beach. You got birds picking up sharks. What if that bird dropped a shark on your kid? That'd be bad. That would be cool as crap. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have been at the beach anyway, little kid. Social distancing. Go home. <laughs> Gotta have some shark repellent if you go to the beach. <laughs> Folks, that was a great movie. Ahead of its time when it came out. Jaws is, would you say, one of the top like oh, 25 yeah. films of all time? Oh, yeah. It I has mean, to be. It's historic. I mean, again... Another movie franchise doomed by, you know, sequels. Yeah. <laughs> Once you got the Jaws 3 in 3D, you're like, hey, you, you, you got me. Yeah. <laughs> Jaws my, 2 wasn't bad, though. Jaws 2 was not bad. Jaws 3 in 3D, I wanted my money back. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jaws 4, right? Jaws 4, The Revenge. The Revenge. This time it's personal. This time it's personal. Hey, take what? It's in the Bahamas or the Caribbean or yeah. something. And was Michael Caine in 4 or was he in 3? <laughs> 4. Four? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, three was Dennis Quaid, I believe. Ah. He was the the instructor or something there at the place. Yeah. But, yeah, folks, Jaws won the best Jaws. Yeah. Hands down. Uh, famous quotes from Jaws. <laughs> We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> when I saw that shark on the boat, <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah. I'm not sure, but I think that was the first time in the movie you got a real glimpse of what the shark yeah. looked like. As, he, as Roy Schneider is uh, throwing uh, bait, and he's got his back turned to the water, and all of a sudden, there's Jaws, baby! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the classic scene where he's pointing the rifle at him when the shark's coming at him. He's got the, the oxygen tank or whatever in his yeah. mouth, and he's like, open wide, <laughs> you yeah. son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> It was like the uh, character of Quint, the old seaman played by Robert Shaw. Yes. His, uh, the big s- speech about how he uh, got his, was he like injured by a shark before? Oh, yeah. Oh, he puts his legs up on the table, and he's yeah. talking about shark injuries. And oh, you got the guy from... Uh, Richard Dreyfus. Richard, Richard Dreyfus, Mr. Holland's Opus. That's right. <laughs> ah, the music teacher movie. <laughs> so that's what was cool about Jaws is... It wasn't just a movie about the shark. It was about these three guys Mm -hmm. in this boat who uh, end up becoming... uh, Shark bait. Pretty good friends. (laughs) Yeah. And shark bait. (laughs) Yeah. So when they get a little 
and Quint in particular, when yeah. he gets eaten by the shark, you're like, oh, man. <laughs> you kind of feel bad for the guy, but at the same time, you're like, I'm glad he went first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wasn't the main character. <laughs> no. And he did kind of go in a gruesome way. I mean, he was he was fighting, but, you know, when you're on slippery wood that's tilting towards the shark's mouth, <laughs> not a lot of place for you to grab onto, folks. And the chompers on Jaws. Oh, yeah. Oof. Yeah, he was, he was hungry. Do you ever have the, that poster, or did you see that poster where they had the shark coming out of the toilet? <laughs> I used to have it as my wallpaper on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> when you're a little kid, that makes you not want to use the toilet. <laughs> nope. Be right on the floor, folks. <laughs> right on the floor. <laughs> you don't want to get eaten by a shark. <laughs> Anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the... Uh, uh, mm. So, other Fourth uh, of July, not not as a uh, monumental, but uh -huh. uh, the Sandlot had a big scene. With it did Fourth of July it fireworks. Was, it was the yard, the group, uh, the yard party, group party, neighborhood party, whatever you want to call it. It yeah. was kind of a monumental. All the friends were together, the neighbors were together, everybody celebrated. Man, we need more of that these days. Yeah, <laughs> block parties. <laughs> Uh, so I've already expressed I don't really like the Sandlot. And we talked about it before, yeah. but we should mention it, and we did. And I only really like the Sandlot because of the big dog. Yeah. Cause I'm you, kind of partial to big dogs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've had uh, two St. Bernards. Two St. Bernards. God rest their souls. Yeah. They're big dogs. <laughs> they moved down to a happier place. <laughs> <laughs> the Sandlot in the sky. The Sandlot in the sky, catching baseballs. Actually, none of them ever went after a baseball. They probably would go after like a uh, smaller dog right? or a smaller person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Prefer toddlers. Yeah. <laughs> so Fourth of July, some, another movie that comes to mind. Um, blown away. Blown away. Tommy Lee Jones. Oh yeah, Tommy is, Lee Jones uh, is back. He's an Irish uh, terrorist. <laughs> Jeff Bridges is the uh, Boston cop who's a uh, bomb I remember this disposal movie. expert. I remember this movie. It's a really good movie. It's a lot of action. Highlighted by a great soundtrack featuring U2, mm -hmm. tying into the Irish connection. Listen, the little maze trap or whatever he had set up in the boat. Yeah. Phenomenal. Folks, the special effects, explosions. Yeah. <laughs> great Boston scenery. Oh. Like they were filming right in... Famous areas of Boston, if, if you've ever been to Boston. And it's I like, do believe the duck boat makes an appearance in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, uh, Jeff Bridges, his dad, his real-life dad, Lloyd Bridges, mm -hmm. played his father in the movie. There it is, folks. He also fared about as well as uh, Quint did in Jaws. But. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? He may have gotten killed first in Jaws on the boat, but everybody's going to remember how he died. That's right. You got eaten by a damn shark. <laughs> a big shark. All right. So we have so many questions to get to. I oh. think we, we're going to take a break. Okay. We, we got questions. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Folks, <laughs> I told you, man, you ask the questions and we'll answer them. I didn't think we'd get this many of them. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, folks. We are back. Q&A time. Oh, man. Woo-wee. But waiting all week for this. So you know your favorite thing on the show is when someone has a correction, right? I love it. You know what? I, I embrace that if I'm wrong on something, I'm always there to correct myself or have someone else correct me. Wow. I will say I was one of the first people to get the coronavirus wrong. <laughs> That's and, true. And I came on the air and I said... I was wrong. <laughs> well, this time they're correcting me. Oh, yeah. oh snap. <laughs> so I'm not taking this one as well. So let's uh, go to you the... You open uh, up that can of worms, get ready to go fishing. <laughs> Again, if you want to contact us, text or voicemail, 585-484-1770. Here we have, uh, this is from... I don't know who this is. You might know this person. Uh, I, I think we're going to leave their name out for now as okay. a, this is your freebie correction. So it says, correction, a sitcom called Mary Kay and Johnny were the first couple to share a bed on TV. 
Hmm. So this is in reference to, we did an episode uh, three or four weeks ago about sitcoms. Yep. And I mentioned the Brady Bunch. They were kind of like the first married couple to be seen in right. the same bed on yep. TV. Correct. We both agreed on this. We, we Yeah. You backed me up. I, 100%. I think the majority of uh, television historians would back me up. <laughs> Correct. Because the show, uh, this person who remains nameless is correcting this on, Mary Kay and Johnny. Abigail. <laughs> that could be the name. Uh, the show aired in 1948. Okay. It aired on the Dumont Network. Uh-huh. Have you ever heard of the Dumont? Never. Yeah. It was, uh, it was one of the first TV networks, and uh-huh. it, was a, it was a failure. It was gone by uh, the late 50s. Okay. Uh, Mary Kay and Johnny, um, they were uh, featured in the same bed, but uh, the show no longer exists. There are no ah. like, copies of it. Ah, so it's a bullcrap show. Well, it's not. It's not like it's bullcrap. It's just it had no impact. Ah, gotcha. gotcha. So they were they were a married couple in the same bed, and then it took another twenty years before you saw that again. Mm. And when it happened, it was the Brady Bunch. Mm. And when the Brady Bunch did it, everyone did it. So somebody really sniffed out the old archives i think it's a stretch i think it's uh i think it's a scam is it's what a, I th- a technicality technicality a you know i gotcha kind yeah. of a gotcha journalism you know, yeah you know journalist looking for their big break you know kind of <laughs> thing you know looking for their moment trying to steal the thunder now the question is i mean we appreciate the correction and we will not we will not air your name, Abigail. <laughs> Does this person who we won't name, Abigail, uh, do they get a coupon? We're still going to give them a coupon because that's, to, the, right? that's the deal. The deal is whether that's you send a deal. correction or not. If you send it a correction, you will get a coupon. Well, if you if you contact us via text or voicemail, yeah, that's the deal. You get a coupon. 585-484-1770. So, person who will rename nameless, Abigail. You get a coupon. There you get a free cup of Jimbo Joe's coffee. No resale value. Good <laughs> till 2027 or 2029. We don't really even know yet. And, you know, we talk about Jimbo Joe's a lot. We do. We do, folks. This is our uh, 21st episode. 21 now. episodes. Last week, we, we got into Jimbo Joe's a little more than yep. we ever had. I think this week we should say a little more because I'm beginning to think people may think this is some kind of joke. So... Listen, folks. Jimbo you got a mug. Is, yeah. Listen, we have a mug. How much more real do you need? <laughs> <laughs> so, all joking aside, Jimbo Joe's coffee is coming to fruition at some point. It, it's a. It's in the process. It's, it's in the process. It's um, a. It's a. You might call it a retirement plan. A maybe? retirement plan. A backup plan if uh, the economy crashes. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. It's but it a, is uh, a real plan. It's a real company. It's a real business with a real tax ID. It's now the IRS don't audit us that we haven't made any money yet. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but it's a real business. We did a whole plan, laid it out with the business administration, everything. So it's a legit company coming to fruition soon. And we're joking that it's going to be 2027, 2029. It might be sooner. It might be even later. It might be 2035. We don't know. We don't. But we that do. coupon is but good. But that coupon is good. And you know what? If I have to, I'll even initial the coupon. I think and I'll you write should. Dates, are, dates are, can be extended at random. <laughs> well, I think you should autograph each coupon. Every coupon will be autographed by yours truly. Here, here. Jim Keezy and the big guy. Well, I'm not signing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, getting back to the huge response on our uh, oh, yeah. Baloney Nation hotline. Oh, We've got a voicemail. Okay. You ready? Let's do it. Hi, uh, this is Jason. Uh, Jason from in, uh, Indiana. Um, I I love the show, and my, it made me very, very hungry. <laughs> I, um, uh, I'm actually in a Wendy's drive-thru right now, getting ready to order my, my food. Get out of there. I was wondering... <laughs> Because I had this crazy thought. I was wondering, are there any fast food menu items 
that you really liked that aren't around anymore that you wish they would bring back? Mm. And that could be from any any fast food place. I was just wondering. Thanks. Bye. So that was Jason, another caller from Indiana. We're Ooh, huge. Yeah. Huge in, in Indiana, folks. We are. Home of the Hoosiers. Yeah, we're Hoosiers. Honorary. You want to talk in baloney with a Hoosiers logo on it? Can't do that. It's copyright infringement, <laughs> folks. <laughs> but the good news is, Jason, you get a coupon coming. Jason, coupon is coming. So what do you think of his question? Is there, no, I think. Red uh, Barn. Okay, so you went for a business that's out of out of business. Red Barn. Anything on Red Barn's menu? <laughs> they had a, they had a, they had a bucket of chicken thing there yeah. that was freaking <laughs> had KFC beat. They had a fish sandwich, oh. which was really good. I got hit by a car in the Red Barn parking lot. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> just and you little, still miss their food. Yeah, I still miss their just a little bump. You know, boop. You know, my fault. Ran out in front of a car. Didn't look both ways. Too excited. Yep. Too excited chasing down the chicken in the line. <laughs> I wanted I wanted food, folks. <laughs> so uh I think you might have been getting to like, you know, the McRib is like oh, the McRib. Something that's not around all the time, but it occasionally does come back. So I used to work in a town called Ithaca, New York, and there was Ooh. a McDonald's right across the street from my my old one of my old jobs and uh when the mcrib came out it was like somebody threw up the bat signal <laughs> and i would go over there and i would buy four five of them you know yeah <laughs> oh dude they're listen i don't know what the mcrib is made out of i know it's not real meat i know it's not real ribs <laughs> but i don't care it's delicious yeah savory and it's <laughs> weird that it's super popular when it comes back but i don't think it doesn't stick around, and I don't think it has staying power. How, how many times do you I, I honestly it? don't know if McDonald's marketing team knows what they're doing with the McRib. Yeah. If I was going to, if if I controlled the McRib, the McRib would be out every, I would bring it out two weeks every quarter of the year. Not once a year. I'd bring it out every, every quarter. Wow. Help inflate your stock prices right when you need it at the end of the quarter. Just saying, folks. McDonald's, if you're listening... Come out with a McRib shake. Wow. Huh? Just blew my mind. Call it a protein shake. <laughs> now Borat got to start. Stream. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mix a little McRib with a little, ooh, you could throw a little eggnog in there. You could throw a little vanilla in there. A little. Ah, uh, you're losing me. Ugh. McRib so shake, thinking... folks. What do you think? <laughs> How about... Do you remember the old apple pies at McDonald's when they were deep fried? Oh, when they were actually, like, somebody actually made them? <laughs> it was like, first off, it was like nuclear hot inside. <laughs> yeah. Like, you could wait 10 minutes, that thing would still yeah. burn your mouth. <laughs> yeah. It was the best apple pie ever. Yeah. Deep fried, like, uh, uh, I don't know what Jimbo Joe's is planning on selling when they when there's sell food to go We to are going to be doing deep fried. Deep fried apple pie is my vote. <laughs> Deep fried apple pie. Listen, Popeyes, not a sponsor of the show, can be if they want. Just reach out to our, our text line. <laughs> <laughs> but it's strawberry cheesecake pie. Really? To die for. Like, literally, if you eat too many of them, you'll probably die. <laughs> but they are to die for. <laughs> like, the delicious. Yeah. A uh, little, like, cinnamon or something on the, on the outer shell. It's crunchy. Ooh. But it's a mix of strawberry cheesecake in the inside. Oh, delicious, folks. Not so big on their chicken. Have you had the new chicken sandwich? That I've had it. I really don't get the hype. I get the hype. And I get a, <laughs> at least two of them every time I go there. I mean, it's a great sandwich. It is a good sandwich. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It's a good sandwich. But I'm, I'm listen, I'm a Burger King Whopper guy. Right. You know, you can't bribe me with the chicken and say it's health food. Well, I don't think anyone's saying the Popeye's chicken is healthy. <laughs> they give you one hell of a piece of chicken on that on that roll. It is good. Like and you know, spicy? folks, we might even try to make that chicken sandwich in here one day live on the show. Oh, this room would never survive. I think we could do it. You think? There's so many people copying the recipe now online. It's insane. Oh, we could do it. They're, all, they're only three ninety nine. I, I guess we just buy them. It's yeah. you don't have to worry about making a mess and cleaning up and <laughs> buying all the ingredients. Probably cost more to cost more for me to buy all the stuff to make it than it would be to eat it just go down there and buy it <laughs> all right so we got a lot of texts 
Okay. Way too many. We might have to save some of these for uh, for next week. Uh, the first one, just a random, what do you do to unwind? What do you do to relax? <laughs> well, well, folks, we're a PG-rated show. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> ah, just kidding. Gotcha. <laughs> if a customer wants a pickle, <laughs> you give them a pickle, right? Damn straight. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, I probably have to say, uh, you know, I'm a yard worker kind of guy, you know. Drive around the old yard tractor, mowing the lawn, got the music playing in the headphones. You know, wind down that way, play with the dogs. So you, you just know. kind of do things around the house. Yeah. And you that's know, your, like your unwinding. We clean the car, you know, vehicles up or something. Or, you know, I'm not one of those. I'm not a big TV guy, even right. though we sound like we know a lot about TV. <laughs> you know, you, you pick your spots. I pick my spots, folks. You you're know, not, you're not wasting your time. You're listen, maximizing. I did the other day unwind by watching my three sons had a marathon on TV. Okay. Forgot that show was entirely in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's an oldie, right? That's an oldie, and it was on the same network with like Little House on the Prairie and all these other shows that I haven't seen in forever. And hey, you've got Netflix, right? Yes. Did you watch the new Will Ferrell movie? I have not. Now listen. Mad Dog watched it down in VA. Yeah. Sent me a text that don't waste your time. I disagree. So. It was good. I'm going to watch it this weekend. That's it, uh, my plan. So it's based on a real thing. This Eurovision is a show like American Idol in Europe. Mm -hmm. And Twitter was blown up over it. I mean, people were really impressed by this, this movie. They had a lot of actual Eurovision uh, competitors in it uh -huh. doing uh, a big medley. But it was good. It was your classic Will Ferrell. There's no, like, surprises, but I liked it a lot. I'm going to watch it this weekend. There you go. Folks, that's what I'm going to do for 4th of July. I'm going to watch the new Will Ferrell movie on Netflix. So the next uh, question, have you considered doing the show on location? Oh, absolutely, folks. We've talked about that. You want to book us for a graduation party? <laughs> <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've we've talked a few things. We talked about maybe doing a show on the road, like yep. actually driving. Yeah, car, driving car driving the vehicle, filming. Or if you're a new up and coming restaurant, you've been shut down during all this COVID stuff. You're coming back to life, and you want us to come and do an episode in your in your restaurant, give you a little exposure on the old uh, World Wide Web. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could do that. We'll do that. We'll come down there. We'll do a little, you know, hook us up with a couple plates, whatever you want to do. Hey, we'll pay our way. We're not looking for freebies. Yes, we are. <laughs> we'll give you a coupon. I mean, we're not. We'll give you a coupon. Seats. Free coffee. <laughs> we'll bring you a mug. <laughs> so here's one. Does Jim Deasy like James Bond movies? <laughs> so I listen. This is funny because I'm a, I love the James Bond movies. You do. I was. Sean Connery yeah. was one of my favorites. And Pierce Brosnan was my other favorite James Bond. I'm not a fan of the new James Bond guy. Daniel Craig. Yeah, not, not a, a fan. fan. Pierce Brosnan came off as the Bond guy to me. He had the look. Yeah. He wasn't overly muscular where you looked like you were trying to throw, you know, Liam Hemsworth in there or Chris Hemsworth or whatever his name is in there <laughs> as the Bond guy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> He was for the perfect actor for that. I, I agree. He was the perfect actor. Yep. I think after his first movie, though, the movies got really bad. Mm -hmm. Even though he was great in the role, I don't think the movies were that good. Mm -hmm. I like Daniel Craig. I, I like those movies a lot. I think they, especially the last one, kind of went over the top. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, did you see the one with Batista in it? Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, Batista was an animal. Nope. He's an animal. He is the animal. <laughs> <laughs> His fight with Daniel Craig on the train was awesome. Now, listen, the, I'm not going to lie. The special effects and all the new ones are phenomenal. Like, it, all great. But, man, if you put Pierce Brosnan in there, I mean, obviously I get it. Batista probably would have killed him trying to film those scenes. But <laughs> Yeah. and I, So with Casino Royale, the first Daniel Craig, I felt like they made a serious attempt to be more realistic kind of get away from the years of gadgets and special yeah. effects. But that's what, what drew you into the movies was all the special effects and the <laughs> gadgets and the smoke screen coming out of the back of the car, the watches that shot a poison dart out or whatever. Or, yeah. 
But I also feel like they go overboard with it. Yeah. I, so I, yeah. Casino Royale I thought was good, and they could add some to it, and they did. But then they, this last one, uh, they just went over the top. Yeah, I see that. I can see that. Big maybe James we, Bond fan, though. Maybe we'll do a James Bond episode sometime. Folks, it That's can happen. 25 movies to talk about. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, People know that you're a wrestling fan, so we get, oh. to, we get wrestling questions. Oh, let's do it. People say Vince McMahon is a wrestling genius, <clears throat> but didn't he just steal ideas from people? He didn't create Hulkamania and all his own ideas, like the Manitar, Gobbledygooker, etc., seem to really stink. Wondering what you guys think of Vince McMahon as some sort of creative genius I think it's a complete sham. Blasphemy. Wow. How dare you? <laughs> I mean, sure, Gobbly Gooker didn't work, but he also created The Undertaker. Yeah. <laughs> Kane. Mankind. Let's let's not lie. He laid the foundation for Hulkamania. Hulkamania, he existed in the AWA with Fern Gagne. Yep. But it was nothing compared to what uh, Vince McMahon did. Stone Cold. Yeah. The Rock. Stone Cold. Let's just stop right there for a minute. <laughs> Stone Cold. Stone Cold. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think when you have to create every character, yeah, there's going to be messes. Yeah, but I, you know what? It shouldn't all be on him to create the character either. He should. He gives you the idea. Right. You interpret the idea and create the character yourself. Uh, he green lights it or says yeah. no. And I think that's how it works when it works best. Like uh, the character of Mankind. Yeah. Vince had like some farther out there ideas. Mick Foley toned it down. Mm -hmm. And it was a character that worked. Yeah. I mean, he went to Dude Love, Cactus Jack. Sure. Dude Love was a great character. Yeah. I love the character. <laughs> I like the question. Yeah. Kind of came at us a little sideways there. If you think about the bad characters, mm -hmm. Duke the Dumpster Droshi. And a uh, couple of we talked about last week, the goon. Yeah. <laughs> There's bad characters, but. Blue Meanie. <laughs> well, he didn't create that one. Oh, no. No. Is that ECW? Yeah. <laughs> Great character, though. I've seen it. But you have to, like, start and stop with The Undertaker. Yeah. I mean, come not, on. Not too many other people would have thought of this character and gotten just the right guy to do it. A funeral guy or a grave digger with the pallbearer. Come on. You can't write. You can't write that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Duke the Dumpster might have not worked. Mm -hmm. But you never know if he had a better person playing the role. It could have. Because I think Vince is a creative genius. Oh, I 100% agree. And listen, we may not agree on this, but the gobbly gooker was part of Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and, and everybody talks about it now. Uh, yeah, as bad as it was, it's lived on. It's lived on. And you know what? When they talk Royal Rumble and everybody's like, I wonder who this is going to be. Is it going to be the Gobbly Gooker? His name comes up quite a bit, even in even in the new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so this next one is from Dennis Grant. Oh, the man himself. He was a guest on the show. Folks, that's Mr. Hollywood right there. <laughs> Big time. So he says... This is kind of in character. A few episodes back, Jim shocked the world by proclaiming to be some kind of tough guy. <laughs> Let's see how tough he really is and take the sit-down, stand-up challenge. The hell is that? He challenges Jim Deasy to come up with a short stand-up routine and perform it <laughs> on the following week's podcast. What the heck is a stand-up sit-down routine? challenge well stand-up comedians and the challenge is to do it while sitting down on a podcast but to do a stand-up routine here on the show oh, i accept your challenge mr grant what do you think i i, I know you for a while i think you want to do stand-up comedy i probably could do this now are we doing this next week that's his uh, question. He, he kind of puts the challenge out there to do it next week. Yes. Let's do it. Book it. It's on. It's on. Dennis, I accept your challenge. So next week, you're going to do the stand-up sit-down challenge. And how long do I have to do the stand-up comedy routine for? Let's say three minutes. Three minutes, folks. 
That's, I got that's, this. Kind of, that's kind of a lot of material. When you do open mic, it's it's about three to five. So that's it's like open mic for you. No pressure. You know what? No, no pressure. Had more pressure at the doctor's office. <laughs> I'm here all week. Oh, I'll put my little I'll put my little skit together. Yeah, I accept. You got, guys. To you got homework. I got homework. I accept. <laughs> so we're gonna wrap up the uh, Baloney Nation segment of the show. We have more questions to get to. Oh, we'll save them for next week. We'll save them for next week. We'll have more coming in because people are going to text or voicemail at 585-484-1770. <laughs> Aunt Paula. <laughs> we haven't heard from Aunt Paula. What's going What's on? What's going on? Where are you at? Yeah, come on. Come on. You used to be... You're one of our subscribers. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> you want a free cup of coffee? <laughs> That's what it all comes down to. Listen... We will give you a free cup of coffee. And Paula, just because you've actually started our tech stuff, you were one of the first. She uh, she left a correction on yeah. our YouTube page. We actually do, as one of our first guests, I believe in process right now in production, is a very own T-shirt for you coming your way. And Paula's getting a T-shirt? Somehow, promotional is paying for her to get a free T-shirt. Oh. <laughs> Well, if someone wants to buy a t-shirt, what would Oh, snap. So we'll be doing giveaways throughout the show at some point. But okay. uh, we are putting up a store where you're going to be able to go on and buy Talking Baloney, Jimbo Joe's Coffee, Baloney Talking, whatever, bumper stickers. Maybe a Tough Guy shirt. Tough Guy shirt. Um, Maybe uh, some uh, Classy Wolf Media. Classy Wolf Media wear, folks. Wow. The biggest media company in Rochester. A block of Rochester. In this one block area of Rochester. <laughs> the biggest media company next to a car wash and gas station. Yeah, and a Tim Hortons. And a Tim Hortons, folks. You could fill up your Jimbo Joe's coffee cup with some fake coffee right next to our Tim Hortons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So we got a plan for next week. We're uh -huh. gonna do open mic challenge. You're doing some stand up. Woo! This is gonna get lively. <laughs> Hope I don't offend anybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, politics. Oh no, it ain't gonna be politics. No religion. No religion. Family stuff. Real life. <laughs> wow. For life. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week. See you next week, folks.